Hello chess friends! In this video I am going to attempt to answer the question, what is the perfect chess opening? Which opening would result from the strongest play from both white and black? Now I know what you're saying. Objectively speaking, there is no perfect chess opening because with perfect play from both sides, there are many openings that should result in a draw. However, there are no perfect chess players. So practically speaking, we can say that the strongest chess opening is the one that gives us the highest probability of winning against the strongest opposition. And what is the strongest opposition? Well, it's pretty widely accepted that for quite a few years now, the strongest players on the planet have not been human. They've been computer programs. So what I did is I went to the Swedish Chess Association's website. They're an organization which plays computer programs against each other. The top programs play thousands of games and they give them a rating and they make a list to see which computer program is the strongest and they have all the games available for download. So I downloaded all the games since 2017, imported them into Chessbase as you can see here and created an opening book. Now the nice thing about Chessbase is when you create an opening book they give you the statistics for each move. So you can see here we have E4, it was played in 9,686 games and if you look down at the bottom here the green is the white wins if you look over here to the right, you can see that white won in 3,062 games with a 32% win rate, 52% draws, that's indicated by the gray bar, and then red indicates black wins at only 16%. So E4 gives white a 32% win rate when the top computers are playing against each other. Now if we go to D4, we see that white has 28% wins versus 32% for E4. Now I should mention that I'm not really considering draws too much because my philosophy is that chess is a game to be won and if you're playing against an imperfect opponent and you get a draw, then you have not played optimally. So I'm only really looking at percentages of wins. Okay, so knight to f3, that has a 28% win rate, same as d4. c4, only 26% win rate. Okay, so for these four most popular moves, e4 is the clear winner. But now if we go to G3, it's only played in 155 games, but it has 1% more wins at 33% than did E4 at 32%. So should we consider G3 to be the strongest opening move for white? I don't think that we should. For one thing, 155 games gives you a pretty large margin of error. It's a little different than E4, which has almost 10,000 games. So it could be that if thousands and thousands of games were played with G3, maybe that percentage would drop from 33% down to 31% or something like that. We must also consider that after the move G3, since this opening has not been so deeply investigated, perhaps the best response for black is not played quite so often as the best response for black after a move like E4, just because this opening has not been investigated as deeply. You can see here that after G3, these are black's responses. D5 is the most common move played by black, and after this move, white's winning percentage is now only 25%. So it seems that that 33% winning percentage for white after G3 is the result of E5 and C5 predominantly. So black is apparently not playing optimally, as often against G3 as it is after a move like E4, D4. That's my theory. And it just seems counterintuitive that G3 would be the best opening move for white. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead with the move E4 as the strongest opening move, which brings us to black's best response. C5, down here you can see has an 18% win rate for black. E5 only 17%, C6 15%, E6 11%. Interesting how the drop in popularity of the move also corresponds with the lower win rate. Knight to f6, Alakine's defense, only 8% win rate for black. So these rarer moves don't typically do really well. I don't think there's any exceptions down here. So we're going to go ahead and select c5 with 18% wins for black, which brings us to the next move. Knight to f3, 29%. Knight c3, 27%. c3, only 16%. Wow. Knight to e2, okay, here's another one. This one gets 30%. Let's look at some of these other ones. 29% for C4. Okay, that's the same as Knight to F3, but these were only played in a very small number of games. 17 games, that's not enough to conclude anything. But Knight E2, 30% wins with 148 games. Should we conclude that that's a stronger move than Knight to F3? I don't think that we should. It doesn't make a lot of sense that Knight E2 would be a better move than Knight F3, you know. It blocks the diagonal for the bishop. It takes less central control. And again, we can see that 
We can see that if black were to make this response to knight f6, white's wins are now only 28%. So we're just going to go ahead and reject knight e2, and we're going to go with knight f3. Next move for black, d6 has 18%, knight c6 17%, e6 only 10%, knight f6 20%, but played in only 30 games. g6 has 22%, but played in only 18 games. And if we investigate a little bit into these moves, white plays e5. The black's winning percentage drops to 15%, and if white plays knight c3, that's where black is getting the good percentages from. Now, I could do this for every move. You know, I could investigate this, the response for the other side for every move, but I'm only going to really do it for these moves that are played in a very low number of games because I just want to prove to myself that they're not as great as the initial statistics show, and I'm just going to assume that these popular moves are as good as the statistics show because a lot of these moves that the computers play are based on some very deep analysis by humans over many, many years. So, you know, the past hundred years of human investigation into what the strongest moves are, that does count for something. And it's known that computers are not at their strongest when they're generating opening moves on their own. So that's, that's my reasoning, and I'm sticking to it. I just can't with good conscience say that g6 is the strongest move for black here, or knight f6. Let's see what happens after g6. Black's getting good statistics when white plays something like c4. If white were to play knight c3 here, black only has a 5% win rate in, the, in those 19 games. So, Rejecting knight f6 and g6 and moving on with d6. d4 is by far the most popular here with a 27% win rate. Knight c3 is only 25. Bishop b5, check, only 22. c3, 24. g3, 40, but again, only five games. That means almost nothing when there's only five games to draw from. Let's go with d4 that has almost 2,800 games. C takes d4 is by far the most popular move, and it gives black better win rates than this knight f6 move, which is played once in a while. Knight takes d4 by white gives 27% wins. Queen takes d4 only 13%. Abysmal. Okay, so knight d takes d4 is the best. Knight f6 played in almost every game here. 17% wins for black. Nothing else. G6, 25% again, but that's one game out of four is not statistically relevant. So we're going to go with knight f6, assume it's best. Knight c3 played in the vast majority of games and has the best statistics. Okay, now this is the moment where black has some options. So this is going to be interesting. a6 gives black 18% win rate. Knight c6, only 17. e6, only 11. And again, g6 does pretty well with 21%. And there's 62 games here, but that is still a very small percentage of the total. You can see up at the top here under N, it's 2917. That's the number of computer games to reach this position. Let's investigate a little bit into G6. Black's getting good percentages after white either plays F3 or Bishop E2. And if white were to respond Bishop E3, you can see black's win rate drop to 17%, more in line with what we would expect. After A6, black has 18%. I should mention that a6 is also the first choice of stockfish 15 at a very deep search depth. I can't remember what it was, but in the cloud, people have let stockfish run for a long, long time. I'm going to be using stockfish's analysis as we get deeper into the position. And if we run into some difficult decisions, it's not clear by these statistics which move is best. I might use the deep analysis of stockfish as a tiebreaker because stockfish 15 is, if not the strongest program on the planet, it's very close to the strongest. So when it analyzes a position for hours and hours very deeply, it does count for something. So here we'll go ahead and select a6, 18% win rate. A lot of choices here for white now. We got bishop e3, 28%, bishop g5, 18%, bishop e2, 20%. Not very good. F3, 30% in 190 games. So it's played about 10% as often as bishop to e3. So that might be a little significant. H3, 27%. Nothing else is really great. Okay, G3, 33%, but played in only 21 games. Not statistically significant enough for us to make a conclusion. But F3, this could be a contender. So at this point, I decided to consult with Stockfish and see what it thinks. At a search depth of 80, which that takes a long time to achieve. I don't know how many hours of analysis and on what kind of hardware that is accomplished on, but a search depth of 80 is crazy. Stockfish chooses F3 as the strongest move. So I think I'm gonna go with F3. And I think that after F3, the position does transpose to a lot of positions after Bishop E3. It's an early F3 but it might not matter. Let's see what happens after f3. Okay, strongest move for black here. You can see 16% wins 
And the knight b3 is the only move even played. Okay, now here, bishop e6 is 16% wins for black. Bishop e7 is 33%, but only three games. Stockfish also prefers bishop e6, so we're just going to go ahead and go with that. Okay, so here comes bishop e3. It's the only move even played. And now all of a sudden we have a lot more games. 1347 as opposed to 140 games at this moment where bishop e6 is played. So clearly we've transposed. And we get to this position where black should play h5 because he gets an 18% win rate. At this point where black plays h5, white only has a 23% win rate. However, a lot of that is based on this knight to d5 move, which is not good for white at all, statistically. Only 17% wins. So white should play queen d2, apparently, with a 29% win rate. Now here we got knight bd7 versus bishop to e7 for black. Knight b to d7 has 16% win rate. Bishop e7 has 18%. But it's played only 10% as often. Only 55 games, which gives us a pretty significant margin of error. It's hard to say which move is actually better. So consulting Stockfish, the top choice of Stockfish 15 at a depth of 53 is bishop to e7. I think maybe bishop e7 is the move we should choose. But I think maybe at this point I will stop and save further investigation for a later video. My plan is to generate an entire game from this opening with Stockfish playing against itself, analyzing each position for many hours. So it may take several weeks to complete the game, but when I'm done, I hope to have what is one of the highest quality chess games ever played. And the result will most likely be a draw, but hopefully there'll be some instructive moments and possibly even some contribution to opening theory. I don't know, but please subscribe to this channel if you want to see my further investigation into the question, what is the strongest opening and resulting chess game that we can possibly generate using statistics and perhaps the strongest engine that's available, Stockfish 15. Thanks for watching.